in, in this video I am going to discuss uh, how to obtain the D2 D point group from D2 point group by the method of stereographic projection. Our objective is to start with a D2 point group and add just one dihedral plane and to see what happens. Start with a diagram like this. This is the XY plane. The principal axis of D2 is a C2 axis perpendicular to the plane of the paper. This is indicated by this oval at this center. There are two more C2 axis perpendicular to the C2. One is along the X axis. This is C2 X. C2 X axis and the other is along uh, the Y axis. This is C2 Y axis. This is the point group D2. Now uh, we want to add one dihedral plane. A dihedral plane must bisect the angle between adjacent C2 axis. So a dihedral plane is indicated by this solid line. Let us call it sigma D. Now in D2 we have these symmetry operators. Identity then C2Z C2X C2Y In D2 we have these four operations. We now add to this list another symmetry operator sigma D. What is the result? If we, if we add sigma D then product of this with, with all of these should be present in the group due to closer property. So sigma D multiplied by E is sigma D. And what is the result of sigma D on an arbitrary point? Sigma D on a starting point say P plus. This means that we have a point P in space above the plane of the paper. Its projection on this equatorial plane is indicated by this, on the XY plane. Projection of an arbitrary point on the XY plane is indicated by this plus. This means that it is above the plane of the paper and it is called P plus. Now what happens if sigma D is applied on P plus? What is the result? The plane is this reflection plane. Therefore by reflection it will come here. The, the point, actual point is above the plane. By reflection it will remain above the plane and therefore its projection will be plus. So we arrive at this point, say, suppose it is called Q. Then we arrive at Q plus. This is a new point and therefore this is, the sigma D is a new symmetry operation in the list. Then sigma D multiplied by C2Z. Sigma D multiplied by C2Z. What happens if this is applied to P plus? What happens? P plus subjected to C2Z. C2Z axis is like this, perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Therefore, by turning through an angle of 180, it will arrive at this place somewhere here. And since it is rotating about the Z axis, it will remain above the plane of the paper. So it is plus. Let us call it R. Then this part is R plus and we have to operate sigma D on this. Sigma D plane is this plane, a mirror plane. Therefore by reflection it will come here. Suppose this is S and this is S plus. And S plus directly from from P plus to S plus 
can be achieved only by a reflection because if you if you turn it in this way it will go it will go to a to a point below the plane of the paper only by a reflection on a plane like this it comes from this place to this place so we require another reflection plane like sigma d we require another dihedral plane call it sigma d prime so this s plus is actually sigma d prime applied to p plus therefore therefore sigma d c to z is sigma d prime thus uh, we see that at insertion of one sigma d plane necessitates the presence of another dihedral plane now our multiplication is not yet complete sigma d is to be multiplied to c to x sigma d c to x on p plus what is the result C2x on P plus, C2x is this line, P plus will come to this position. By rotating about this axis, it will come to this position and will become hollow. I explained all these in my earlier video. From a, from a point above the plane of the paper, a rotation about x axis will, will bring it to a position below the plane of the paper. And therefore, its projection will be hollow. PQR Yes, T. So this part is sigma D, then T hollow, T hollow. And now we have to reflect it on sigma D. T hollow or sigma D plane is this, now this by reflection it will come to this position. T hollow will come to this position from T we arrive at u so this is u hollow and now from from p plus to u hollow oh how can you go this is a, this is not a reflection on this plane it is actually going below the plane therefore it is turning it is it is not turning through 180 therefore actually it is rotating through an angle of 90 about z axis and then being reflected on the xy plane this is actually a c4 rotation about the z axis and followed by a, play, a reflection on a perpendicular plane if you rotate this point about the z axis through an angle of 90 degree and then reflect on this plane xy plane you will arrive at this position therefore this is this is actually s4 operation being carried out on p plus thus thus sigma d multiplied to c2x produces a new operation this is a new operation because this new point is generated so in this list we now have another operation S4 Z. Multiplication is yet to be done. Sigma D to be multiplied to C2 Y. Sigma D to be multiplied to C2 Y. On P plus, what is the result? P plus by rotation about the y-axis, two-fold rotation about y-axis comes to this position. Call it, say, w. Then it is, this is equal to sigma d on w hollow. Sigma d is this plane, this plane, and if it is reflected on this plane, it comes here.
let it be A. Then we arrive at A hollow. And now how to come to this position from this P plus, from P plus to Q to A hollow. From here S4 one time will bring you here, then another S4 will bring you here from plus to hollow, hollow to plus, then again plus to S4 three three times about the Z axis. This is actually S4 carried out three times about the Z axis on the point P plus. Therefore, sigma D C2 Y operation is equal to S4 operation carried out three times. This is also a new operation because a new point is generated. So our list is this S4 three times about Z axis. Now it can be verified in the same manner that no new operation is generated. For example, if you multiply S4Z with C2X, suppose you multiply S4, S4Z with C2X on P plus, on P plus, what will happen? S4Z on C2, P, C2X P plus, P plus on C2X comes to T hollow, T hollow from P plus to T, T hollow. Now S4Z, S4Z on T hollow, T hollow. From this hollow, you will go to this plus by one S4 rotation. Therefore, it brings you to Q plus. On S4 rotation, means 90 degree rotation, followed by reflection. Hollow comes here, and then on reflection, it becomes plus. So S4Z on T hollow will give you Q plus. Q plus is an is not a new point. It is already there for therefore this is not a not a new not any new operation. This is this is actually from P to Q plus you come by sigma D operation. In this way, sigma D on P plus. So this is actually sigma D operation. In this way you can show that only the, the, this is a closed set of symmetry operators. This is a point group. No new operation will be generated. Uh, number of operators will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sigma, where is sigma d prime? Sigma d prime is another operation. We have got it, sigma d. So we have got identity, then C2Z, C2X, C2Y, then Sigma D, Sigma D primed, and then two S4 operations, S4 and S4, three times. Altogether there are eight operations, altogether there are eight operations in D to D and there is no inversion operation. I is absent, no inversion operation. If you invert this, you don't, you should, if there is a, a center of inversion, then this hollow should become a plus here on the opposite side. But this is not the case. So there is no inversion center. This is the diagram. A neat diagram can be obtained by just uh, striking out these le names, letters, only these symbols and these figures. This figure will constitute a stereographic projection for D to D point group. We started from D2 and we have arrived at D to D just by assigning one sigma D. The other sigma d plane is a consequence of the presence of one sigma d. In this way, we can uh, extend our uh, illustration with more point groups. I will do that in my next videos.
Thank you very much for the patient hearing.